Kona. Hey guys, welcome back to Study Club. In today's video, I'm filming a part two to my How to Study Chemistry video series on my channel. If you haven't checked out part one already, the link is somewhere on the screen now. I'd recommend you watch that first because I go more into detail about how to actually learn the content and revise it throughout the course. For example, how to take notes in class, how to find the best resources and things like that. So this video will be more of a focus on closer to your final exam. So in that month or two lead up towards your final exams, you might want to tweak up your revision style a tiny bit to focus on making sure you know all the content and that you're ready for exam conditions. <laughs> So if you feel like that fits your situation, then keep watching this video and let's get into it. Okay, so the first part of this video, I'm going to be talking about revision techniques you should be sort of changing and using closer to your exams. Some of these I started using like a month or two out. I would recommend starting this with like in second year once you've like learnt all the content because it's more an active way of revising versus writing summary notes throughout the year. So the first technique is something known as active recall. Some of you may have heard of it, some not. Most likely you'll probably be doing it already, you just I'm just putting a name to it so never fear, it's not some scary thing. So what active recall is, is active recalling. Yeah, so all it involves is trying to... I don't know how to explain this without saying active recall. So what it involves is practice retrieving the information from your head onto paper, out loud, whatever it is. And that's the content that you've learned. So basically you're mimicking exam conditions where you're going to have to process the information in your head, find what you need, and then put it onto the paper to answer the question. The more you practice this in your revision, the better you'll be off in the exams because you will have practice getting the information from your head versus looking at your notes and then trying to answer a question. There's multiple ways you can do active recall. One of the most common ones is practice papers and that's what I meant by you probably are doing active recall already. Yeah, so practice papers is one form and then another more explicit way of doing it which I adopted in like my final year of studies was a method called blurting. I don't really know if this is an actual thing but we're gonna call it blurting now. All you need is an A4 sheet of paper and your syllabus outline. I grabbed my syllabus outline, chose a certain to subtopic that I wanted to revise that day, and then followed each syllabus point along and wrote down everything I could remember about it. So, for example, if one of the syllabus points is... Okay, I don't know, I'm just making this up right now, but if one of them said, like, recognize SN1 and SN2 mechanisms, what I would do then is write down everything I knew about each mechanism, I might draw it and then like state the characteristics so one might be slow one might be fast and then basically summarize whatever that syllabus point was asking so turn each syllabus point into a question that's going to work best for your understanding points in the IB syllabus because those are sort of ones you need to like learn the content and memorize whereas your skills points they might be a little more difficult to use this method for and that's where your practice papers will come into play so, for example, if one of the syllabus points said something like perform calculations, you're not going to be able to like blurt that onto a piece of paper because you need like a question to apply your knowledge to. So something you could write down might be like the formula, how to use it, what each thing in the formula means. But to gain like the best practice out of that will be through past papers. So the next thing I'll do once I'd finished my memorized sheet was grab my summary notes. And my summary notes revision booklet things were the first thing I had completed after I finished a topic. So throughout the year, when you get towards the end and you're doing this active recall, you, sh you should have a full set of notes that are complete. What I recommend doing is writing them based off the syllabus. This is something I mentioned in the first video and that's really going to help you here when you're doing this bloody method because if your notes are according to the syllabus, they're concise and they're straight to the point. So when you go to check your blurting sheet and see what you got wrong, things you missed, you can directly follow your summary notes. Once I finish that blurting sheet, what I do is I'll take my revision booklet and then a different colored pen and I'll go through and just mark things, cross things out where I got them wrong or I'll add things in like if I missed a point. And that's really going to help you in your revision after that to identify gaps in your knowledge. I'm pretty sure some of you may have heard the term don't study hard, study smart. And that's really important in any course because there's so much content 
in a range of different subjects that you're going to have to be able to recall and remember and like take exams on. So studying smart to me that just means identifying the gaps in your knowledge and targeting them first because that's really what you need to be working on in your revision. You don't want to be wasting time going over things a million times that you already know. With this method of blurting you can then take that sheet and then look at the different coloured markings and then see areas that you're forgetting things and you can do drills on that after that to try and relearn or memorise the content. And different drills might be writing things down on a whiteboard. So for me, I memorise things by writing them down. So I would, if it was like a mechanism that I was getting wrong, I might like draw it on the whiteboard. That's from my notes then from memory until I was able to do it like consistently. Or you might do flashcards. That's another way of memorising things. Just go through those drills again, read through your notes and keep practising until you can recall it correctly and consistently. Okay, so as I mentioned a few times, the next form of active recall is obviously past papers. And if you haven't started past papers already in like your final year, I recommend you get onto it as soon as you can. As soon as you finish this video, go start and look at the past papers because that's going to be your most accurate description of what you're going to receive in the exam. Courses like the IB, past papers are a pretty good indication of what you're going to get in the final exam. What I did was I started with the later past papers. So towards the exam, the past papers that I was up to was the most recent ones because over time the syllabus will change. So if you're starting pretty early, I would start with, with like the older past papers and then that means towards the final exams, you've saved the most recent ones to be able to learn off. The past papers are really important for revision for a number of reasons. So the first one is Obviously, you're learning the types of questions that they're going to ask. And the more past papers you do, you'll see that common questions get asked every year. And you can almost guarantee that it will come up in your exam. And the good thing about this is the more you practice those, you'll get consistent and more accurate with them. And also, you'll be able to complete them faster because you know exactly how to approach it. And that's going to help you time-wise in your exam because there'll be a spread of questions that are like common and some of like the weirder questions they ask that are kind of hard to prepare for. So if you're able to knock out the common questions that they ask every year quite confidently and accurately, then that's going to save you so much more time because you can go through the paper and the reading time, do those questions first, get them out of the way, and then spend more time on maybe the harder questions. So then following that, another benefit of doing past papers is analyzing them afterwards. So doing them is one thing that's going to help you somewhat in your revision. But to me, the most effective way of revising is learning from your mistakes in your past papers. So once I completed one, I'd obviously check the last game to see if I got it right or wrong. And then actually spend time sitting down and analyzing why you got things wrong. Was it a silly mistake? Was it a calculation error? Or was it like a gap in your knowledge? So you want to go through the whole paper and then this is something that my chemistry teacher taught me. So shout out to you, Mr. Buckley, for giving me these tips. It's something he called Miss Chemceptions. <laughs> but what it basically is, is I had a book where I would write down all my mistakes after I would finished a past paper and just documented them all into the same place. So I had these books, they're from Muji and they're like little A5 dotted books. And once I completed like a multiple choice or a paper two or whatever it was, I would circle the questions that I got wrong and then spend time to actually go and write down the question. And then underneath that, I'd put a full work solution to it. So I won't directly highlight the correct answer onto the question because by doing this, I was able to cover the box of like work solutions and then read the question and try and attempt each question throughout the book, like in the lead up to my exams. I was able to see if I actually understood things that I used to get wrong like a while back. Going to actually find the work solution is going to help you revise because first of all, it's going to identify why you got the question wrong. Um, if it's like a silly mistake, then you'll know exactly how to answer it correctly for the next time. So if it's a gap in your knowledge, you might want to go look at the mark scheme or look at your notes, combine them to try and answer the question yourself. And then if you're really struggling, you can go ask your teacher, but you should go through those steps when you're trying to figure out the work solution for a question. So basically after I'd finished past papers, I'd actually allocate time in my revision schedule to document my mistakes because 
for me, I really wanted to learn from my mistakes. So I actually sit down and take the time to understand why I got it wrong, how I meant to improve next time and not get it wrong again. And another good thing about actually doing this is once you've done a few past papers and you've gone through and identified and documented your mistakes, you'll see that over time, well, for me at least, there were questions that I kept getting wrong, like the similar types of questions I kept getting wrong, or they were like under the same topic. So I'd go back and revise that first in my revision to make sure I was good with it. By the end of the two years, once I'd done quite a few past papers, I had two books of these misconceptions and they were the things I looked at right before my exam. You can look at your summary notes before an exam, but for me that just kind of overwhelmed me because there are like 21 topics or whatever. And going through that many revision notes like right before the exam can be quite overwhelming. So if I just looked at my targeted areas of weakness, then I'd flick through this misconception book and sort of use the work solutions to help me revise things that I kept getting wrong. That's sort of what you really want to be looking at before because it, it's condensed to things you keep forgetting. So if you look at that right before our exam, it might help you. So the next tip that I'm going to give you is something we did as a whole class. We did this a few months before our final exam, once we finished learning all the content. And it was a revision technique that I found quite useful, which was making our own topic tests. So in class, we got into groups of about two or three. And then we were assigned a topic of the syllabus. So I got assigned organic chemistry HL. What we had to do was look through past papers and find the most difficult questions we could and compile it all into one topic test. So there are a number of reasons why I found this quite useful. I found this extremely useful for picking out the minute details that would help you boost your grade from like a six to a seven. Because at this point of my revision, I found I had quite good general understanding of like the concepts. What I mentioned earlier was those weird questions they asked. They might be really specific to a syllabus point. So picking out the minute details of the course is something you really want to look for in your revision towards the end if you want to boost your grade up. Because some of the questions will be quite specific. For example, in organic HL, there's a syllabus point about different solvents that reactions work best in, so like polar aprotic or polar protic. You would sort of brush over in your initial like stages of revision because you, you want to gain a better understanding of like the common questions, so like the mechanisms and how to draw different structures, whereas those sort of details you'll just brush over initially. You want to look at those towards the end of your revision if you want to boost your grade. Actually looking through the past papers for a certain topic really helped you to find trends and patterns in like the questions they ask from year to year. One tool that I found quite useful is a website called Exam Mate. What you do is you put in the course that you're doing, the level, and like you can like click certain topics and it'll come up with past paper questions in recent years directed to whatever you filtered out. So it acts like a question bank and it's completely free. I use that to help me find difficult questions, so I went through that. Again, if you find the most common questions and the trends throughout the past papers, that's going to help you in your own revision because you know which questions you should be confident in answering because they're likely to come up. When actually making these past papers themselves, I actually tried to attempt to create my own questions, so I made some multiple choice, some short answer, and that's going to help your own revision because it's going to test your knowledge to see if you are able to form an exam style question. And then secondly, by doing that, you're sort of putting yourself into the examiner's shoes, and that's something you want to do in your final exam as well. It's going to help you gain marks, and it's also going to help you structure your answer correctly. Like for the short answer questions, writing out the actual mark scheme for questions you made up, that's going to help you with your own revision because you have to write out different marks the examiners might be looking for. So if it's like a four mark question, you have to come up with four points and you have to think outside the box to think of other possible answers students might give to it that are still technically correct. Once we've completed the topic test, we got to share them within our class. So essentially we ended up with a topic test for each topic of the syllabus. And that was another revision resource. And also going through those topic tests was also very helpful because they were the hardest questions people could find under that topic. So if you were able to practice these questions, go through them, do them under time conditions and get them correct or like learn from your mistakes with them, 
then it should be a pretty good for your exam because you can tackle the hardest questions. Okay, my final exam revision tip is to have a revision tracker. So this isn't really revising the content, but it's more organizing your revision and structuring it in a way that you'll be able to complete all of the content before the final exam. So with my revision tracker, what I did was I put out each subtopic into a table and one column was a name. I had summary notes, mind maps, whatever other revision I wanted to do, so like blurting and then like a deadline and then a column for confidence levels. So once I completed my summary notes, I ticked them off for each topic. So I made sure I'd finished all my notes before I went on to the next thing. So towards the end, I did these mind maps, which I have a video on my channel. I think it's called How to Make Revision Mind Maps, where I show you with an example how to make those. Those mind maps I sort of went through towards the end to like look through, again, the minute details that I might have forgotten, especially for topics that we did very early on in the course. I just did that mind map to consolidate everything. And then the confidence level system that I created on my revision tracker was again to identify what I should be studying first leading up to the final exam. Like a month or two before my exam, I had completed the rest of the revision throughout the year. The ones where my confidence level was sort of lower, I targeted that first, practiced more questions, went through the content again. And that way, again, you're studying smart by targeting things that you're sort of weaker on first. 